welcome to another Sunday service. We are so glad that you have welcomed us into your homes again. We thank God it's another Sunday. It's the start of a new week and we have been enjoying August, haven't we? So I want to thank God for everything he's doing in our lives. I want to thank him for um, his power, his grace, his favor upon us. And I want to thank him for everything he's doing in your life because I believe the life is getting better and better. Amen. So I want to thank Pastor for the opportunity of this platform to share again. We have been sharing on Bible Heroes and we are going to conclude it today, not because we have exhausted everything, because we have not exhausted anything at all. But um, yes, I think we're going to end with this and then we're going to start something new. We all like novelty, don't we? Um, and I thank God for his word. His word is new. His word is new. His word is fresh um, every morning. And incidentally, today we are going to be speaking about the power of the spoken word. Um, we're concluding this series. And I, I think this is one of the most powerful tools that God uses to make his people successful. And God teaches his people to use to make their ways prosperous and successful. Hallelujah. We're going to be speaking about the power of the spoken word. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you and honor you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for an opportunity to share, for an opportunity to learn, for an opportunity to speak. Father, we ask that you bless the hearing of your word. Father, I ask for grace that your words be seasoned with grace. Father, I ask for utterance. Thank you, because I know, Lord, that you have heard with asked and prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. So, we have been sharing on principles. Principles that the Bible heroes of praise have made their, their way successful. But I like to say it's principles that God taught them or what God modeled to them. Hallelujah. And this is one of God's most, as I said, most powerful. So the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, that we know that the walls were framed by God's word. Hallelujah. It says, by faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen we're not made of things which are visible. The things that are seen, we're not made out of things that are tangible. They're framed and they are kept by the power of God's word. And in that same way, God has taught us to use our words. Apostle Paul says, we believe and therefore we speak. Hallelujah. Because we know that our words carry power the same way that God's word, God's word, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the word of God is quick and it is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides us from that, the soul of the spirit and the bone and the marrow. Hallelujah. It is quick. And it is powerful. So words are so powerful. I mean, you know, we've been watching the Olympics the last week, a bit over a week or so. It's, in fact, it's getting to two weeks, isn't it? Absolutely. But so the Olympics should be winding down now. And I was watching one of the races. I can't even remember which one it was. But the commentator was saying, this young man's American. And he was, he, he, he was born and brought up in Alaska. He is, he is a, a black, an African-American and he was born and brought up in Alaska. And he said when he was, I don't know what he said, he was four, five, he told his teacher, I am going to go to the Olympics. And he thought that was ridiculous because far away in Alaska, and if anybody knows anything about that, it's so cold. If I could go saying he used to want to keep himself warm. So cold, such a cold area. It's not the kind of place people train to be athletes. It's not the kind of place people aspire to be athletes, but this is something a little boy said. And this year, he was in the Tokyo Olympics. Isn't that just great? 
goes to show what our words can do, can give us direction. But even more than that, when we speak things, we speak them into being, they go ahead of us and they go and accomplish that thing that we have said. You know, God's, God's word says in Isaiah 55, he said, his word will not return to him void. It will prosper. It will accomplish the thing he has sent it to do. In that same way, in that same way, our words are powerful. And we're going to be looking at a few examples of what, how these Bible heroes, which we'll be looking at, how God taught them to use the words for good and how some other people use the words for bad. Hallelujah. The Bible says life and death in the power of the tongue life and death so you can use it for good and you can use it for bad. you can speak death to yourself you can speak sickness on yourself you can speak poverty on yourself you can speak disadvantage to yourself but you can also speak success you can speak increase you can speak faith you can speak favor you can speak prosperity you can speak uh, health anything you want it is all for the taking. Life and death. Hallelujah. I am the power of the tongue. Amen. So I want us first to look at Ezekiel. This famous verse, but a famous passage, but I think it is always, always great when we look at it because it goes to show what God's word in our mouth can do and what God wants us to do with our words. Hallelujah. The value of the dry bones. Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 7. It says, the hand of the Lord was on me. And he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord. And he set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. Then you would know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together. Boom to boom. Hallelujah. I prophesied as I was commanded. That is how God is commanding us today to speak to any dead thing around us, to speak to any dryness around us, to speak to any sick thing around us, to prophesy life, to prophesy coming together, to prophesy increase, to prophesy going forward. Hallelujah. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. First of all, God asked him, can we leave? And he answered, why is Ezekiel? He said, don't you know? He didn't say, ah, God, they are very dry. Oh. They don't look like, they are all dead. They are not just dead, they are scattered. They're not just dead, they are scattered. A valley of very dry bones. And he said, prophesy to them. And I want you to see what, he, what God asked him to say. God gave him very specific things. God didn't just say, dry bones, leave. Dry bones, come together. And what can we see from here? That when you are prophesying, when you are speaking things into being, you have to be specific. You have to know exactly what God wants you to say. Hallelujah. God said, I will make breath enter you. And you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. 
So he went stage by stage by stage by stage. And if you continue to read that passage, you will see everything unfolds the exact way God said he should prophesy. Hallelujah. So when you are speaking things into being, in fact, maybe you should write them down so you know exactly what you want. You just don't speak words into the air. You speak as God has commanded you to speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can these bones live? Can these bones live? Amen. Amen. So important, so important what we have just read. Speaking specifically. Speaking directly. And before he finished speaking, there was a noise. There was a noise. We're going to come to the believing part of it. I want us to see where, unfortunately, words were used negatively. Numbers chapter 14 from verse 26 to 31. The Bible says, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How long will this wicked community grumble against me? I have heard the complaints of these grumbling Israelites. So tell them, as surely as I leave the clothes of the Lord, I will do to you the very thing I heard you say. In this wilderness, your bodies will fall. Every one of you, 20 years old or more, who was counted in the census and who grumbled against me, not one of you will enter the land I swore with uplifted hand to make your home, except Caleb son of Jephunneh and Joshua, son of Noah. As for your children that you said will be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land you have rejected. This is why it's so important that when we are in our process, when we're God is taking us on a journey, that we are careful, careful what we say, not complain, not speak negatively. It's hard. I know, I know what I'm talking about. It can be very difficult to be in a difficult position and be in a place where you feel like God has forsaken you. Be in a place where you think like, feel like God has, fors- you know, God has forgotten you. You're in a place where things are really tough, really difficult. And you say, why am I here? When you're going through your wilderness, when you're going through your difficult time, when you're going through adversity, it can be hard and you can begin to stop nonsense. You can begin to say, Lord, my life is horrible. You can begin to say, my life is the worst. You can begin to say, Lord, I wish I wasn't here. You know, I've been reading the book of Job. And it's interesting the kind of things he said. You know, so despondent, so depressed. So depressed. And understandably so, because his hands were clean, because he was a righteous man. He was just... You know, someone who the devil just decided to enter his 18. He was so despondent. There was always a gleam of hope. He said, I know my Redeemer lives. You know, there was always somewhere he would he would put in hope here and there. But he was so despondent. We need because I mean we have the advantage of God's word. So we can go back and we can look at it and we can say, Lord, you promised this. Lord, your word says this. Lord, I'm holding on to you. Lord, I'm depending on you. Lord, this isn't a nice place to be. But it doesn't matter. I will still praise you. I will praise you in my valley experience. I will praise you in my desert experience. I will still praise you. Hallelujah. This is why it's so important, so, so important, that even when things are tough, we don't begin to say the wrong thing. And this is what happened to the children of Israel. Oh, that we may die in this wilderness. I mean, they just kept saying it. And God was tired. He was sick and tired. He couldn't take He said, how long, how long, how long will I bear with these people? He said, he said, no. As you have said, I think you've been saying now you will have it. God forbid that it will be unto us. The negative things that we have said or we have uttered or we have thought. Hallelujah. God said, that thing you said, the one you've died, that that is how you will die here. You wouldn't enjoy that thing I promised you. God forbid that we would would not lay hold on what God has given us. We will not lay hold on life because of the wrong words that have come out of our mouths. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. We will be calling back and counseling 
negative things that we have said over our life, that we have said over our children, that we have said, spoken into our future, we will be calling them back and canceling them because there is power, there is superior power in the word of God. Hallelujah. So this is what happened to this, 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 this Israelites. This is what happened to them. They did perish. Okay. So Mark chapter 11 verse 23. It says, For assuredly, assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. This is one of the most powerful words of Jesus in with regards to spoken word, with regards to faith. He will have whatsoever he says. If you don't doubt in your heart, you say something, something that seems impossible. You say to a mountain, be moved and be cast into the sea. The Bible says, if you don't doubt it in your heart, you believe it, you will have whatsoever you say. That is why we should be careful what we say and believe. In some of the Corinthians chapter 4, um, Paul says, we believe, therefore we speak. What you believe and you say, you will have. What you believe and you say, you will have. So be careful what you speak. The Bible talking in, uh, in James chapter 3 verse 6, it says, And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire for good. Or for bad. For good or for bad. So we need to be careful what we say. You know, I'm always I'm on my kids. If I hear any negative word, I'm calling. What did you say? You, I am calling them immediately. I'm calling their attention to it. If they say a bad word on somebody, on, the, on their brother, I say, you can't say that. You can't project negativity on, on, on your brother. So we should be careful what we say, and so, especially when we're emotive, when we're angry, when we're upset. Sometimes we just blot out something, you know. And it happens to all of us. I'm very quick to retract it, very quick to retract it immediately. And say, no, I didn't mean it that way. Or no, you're not this. Or no. Yeah. But it's even better not to say it. Not to say it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to be careful what we say amen amen i want us to just i just want us to, to take on three things three very important things from this number one we speak things into being when we say something and we, these are things we have also we have already gone, gone over we speak them into being our words become things our thoughts become things. Our words become our reality. Your life moves in the trajectory of your dominant thoughts. And I dare say, your dominant words. What you keep saying and keep saying and keep saying and keep saying. You know, I think back to my, my, my um, university days. And I think, whenever I think back, you know, those of us, those people who kept saying, they were going to go here, they were going to go to America, they were going to be this, they were going to be that. Today, they are all there. All those people who believed they were going to be, you know, very big, they were going to be very successful. Were, all of them as successful as they said they were going to be. So we should always speak what we want to see. Amen. We should all, and we should be bold. What happens to many of us is we're not very bold because we think we'll come across as cocky. We think we'll come across as, um, as proud. We think we'll come across as, um, you know, very self-assured, superior maybe. No. It is the intention. It is the heart, isn't it? So let us be bold to prophesy what we want to see in our life. Let us be bold to say what we want to see. Yes, one day I'm going to do this. One day I'm going to be here. One day I will be on TV. One day I'll do this. One day I'll do that. 
or this is what I'm walking towards and really believe it and walk towards it and you will be there. So we speak things into being and so we should be careful what we speak and we should teach this to our children as well. You know, you aspire to be something, say it, say it, say it. This is why people say, say affirmations every day, which is, which is a new thing. You know, I mean, even unbelievers do it. They wake up every morning and say, I am blessed and say, I am beautiful. I am worthy. I am great. I am favored. I am going to be successful. I am this, I am that. Everybody uses those affirmations because they know the power of words. You manifest it and then it enters into you, it does something to your mind. So very important if you want to have a number of things that you say every day, write them down, speak them every day. Anything you want to see, begin to speak them. And it's so great for starting a new one. Begin to speak. Every morning you wake up, there could just be five things. I am this, I am this, or this is what I'm believing for. I have this, I have, don't forget. You believe it, you will have whatsoever you see. So begin to speak those things into being. And tell them to your children. My children have a number of things they say every day, every morning, every morning. Teach it to your children. Let them begin to speak powerful things into their lives every day. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Two, the Bible says in Job chapter 22, verse 28, it says, You will decree a thing and it will be established. You will decree a thing. And it will be established. You know, decrees are like laws. They are like laws. They are like, um, you know, they are believe you. They are things that are just stated, you know, put in place. And everyone has to abide by it. So you can decree a thing over your family. You can decree a thing about your children's future. You can decree a thing about where you work. You can decree a thing about your business. You can decree a thing about your city. You can decree a thing about your country. And it will be established. It will be established. So this is very, very, very important when you're making prayers for others, when you're making territorial prayers. So you can say, it, you, you can decree these things when you're making prayers. Like, like pastors, like intercessory prayers, when you're making prayers for people, when you're saying things concerning your children, when you're saying things concerning a city, when you're saying things concerning your family, when you're saying things concerning your nation, you can make a decree and it will be established unto you. Hallelujah. And finally, I want us to look at Matthew 18, 18. It says, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven so heaven backs up your words heaven backs up your decision heaven backs up whatever you say so whatever you say stands and it talks about binding and loosing you know earlier i said you can call back your words and you can cancel them you can i mean my son um Sometime this week, you know, I woke up, oh, he woke up early and so, oh, mommy, I had a bad dream. I, I dreamt that this and that and that happened. And I said, have you canceled it? Okay, let us cancel it now. And we decreed, I said, this will not happen. This will not happen. This will not happen. Because whatever has been revealed to us belongs to us. The hidden things belong to God. So whatever has been revealed to us, we can decide what happens. And we, we canceled it and it stood. And, you know, we just left it because I knew, you know, it will not happen because we have said it will not happen. Amen. So whatever you bind is bound. And whatever you lose is loose. It is backed up by heaven. It is backed up by heaven. And don't forget that without words we create. Because God created everything we see. Everything we see was made out of the intangible. Was made, was framed by God's word. When you think about galaxies, I mean, it blows your mind to think about galaxies and to think about how big the universe is. They were all framed and are kept by the power of God. So we can create 
anything we want by speaking it into being. We speak it into being and we go ahead. And we, I mean, it's just like this TV or this camera. Somebody thought it. It was a thought in somebody's head. And then the person now went ahead and started to make it. Look, what kind of material can we use? Let's try this. Let's try this. Or why don't we use this one? Maybe this might even be better. And one day they saw exactly what they had thought in their mind. So in that same way, we have the same spirit of creativity. We believe. Therefore, we speak. Amen. So I don't know if you have anything you want to speak into being. I don't know if there's anything you want to create. I don't know if there's anything you want to bind or you want to lose. I don't know if there's any decree you would like to make today. Now is your time. Let us begin to speak it. Let us begin to prophesy as God has asked us to. Let us begin to speak into being what we want to see for the rest of 2021. What we want to see in the lives of our children. What we want to see in our own lives, in our careers, in our business, in our Christian life, in our Christian work. What frontiers we want to take for God. Let us begin to speak them into being. Let us begin to speak them into being knowing that our words are powerful. That our words will be backed up by the power of heaven. Let us begin to speak it into being. Your words, your words are powerful. The Bible says death and life lie in the power of the tongue. Begin to speak life. Begin to speak increase. Begin to speak prosperity. Begin to speak favor into your life. Speak health. Speak longevity. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you. And then let us begin to call back. Any negative words we have said, any grumbling, every, any complaining, any idle words. Jesus said every idle word, every idle word we will give account of. So even the things we said when we were joking, we were laughing. Every idle word, every idle word. Let us begin to call it back and let us begin to cancel it. Let us superimpose God's word upon it. Let us superimpose the right words. Let us cancel them and speak the right words of our lives and speak the right words of ourselves. It will be well with us. Things will work for us. We will go forward. We will be great until we become very great. God has not forgotten us. God is on our case. God's power is working. Is at work in our lives. God's word is at work in our lives. Our children are brilliant. Our children are the head. They are not the tail. Our children will do well in the name of Jesus. We are healthy. We are walking in health. We refuse sickness in our bodies. We refuse sickness in the bodies of our children. We refuse sickness in the bodies of our spouses. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Let us thank him. Let us bless him. Let us give him glory. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are good. You are kind. You are glorious. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. For all you've asked and prayed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. That was great. Hallelujah. That was great. God's word is so powerful. It's so powerful. So don't forget, pastors continuing his message on tuesday the magnet in you we have been having great revelation great fun with it every tuesday so please join us on youtube or on our website hallelujah let us pray for our friends father we thank you we bless you we glorify you and honor you thank you lord god for the privilege to give into your work we ask that your blessings will come upon us will come upon the titles, will come upon the givers, and will come upon everyone who desires to give. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. We are also praying every Wednesday and every Friday. Don't forget to join us. I'm trusting God. God is about to do great things in your life, in the life of your family, in your business, in your career, in everything you put your hand to do. 
Expect great things this August. Expect great things. Wake up every morning and say, my gates are open continually. I am expecting increase today. I am expecting a good, a good surprise, a wonderful surprise. I'm expecting God's favor to go ahead of me. Wake up every morning with expectation and step out and see what God can do. Thank you for joining us and God bless you.